Hey guys, it's Cam from Crafts and Tailored, and in this episode of What Is On My Wrist, we are talking about the James Bond Submariner. Yes, the Rolex 6538 Big Crown Submariner, the Large Crown Submariner, the Mambo Jumbo, the Colossus of Clout, the whatever you want to call it, the, the massive humongo crown Submariner. I love it. That's it. That's the whole... It's a whole thing. 6538, James Bond wore one. It's a cool watch, they're very expensive, they look cool. I'm out, I'm out of here. I'm getting up, I'm going. Okay, all right, so Big Crown Submariner, reference 6538, produced between 1954 and 1959. Uh, no date sub, uh, gilt chapter ring, two lines of text or four lines of text. So there's a lot of variants of the 6538 between 1954 and 1959. This specific example is one of my favorite variants because it is from 1958. Eight millimeter uh, winding crown. Also on 6538s like a lot of the Submariners from the 1950s into the early, early 1960s, there are no crown guards. Rolex obviously changed that and implemented crown guards with the square shoulders, then pointed crown guards, then the little nubby nobule whatevers, and now we have like our kind of standard, you know, crown guards. But before that, um, Rolex Submariners and GMTs and a lot of the sport watches didn't possess any crown guards, and they changed that due to the fact that the crown is actually one of the weakest points of a watch for water resistance. So if you knock this or if you bump this on something, you can actually rip the crown off the case. So this watch has uh, some other cool features as well. One, we've got a rotating bezel. The bezel itself is actually made out of brass. So if you look at the bezel, it's not a steel bezel. Uh, some examples possess steel bezels, which are most commonly service replacements. But these, per these earlier variants in the original bezels are actually brass. The other thing that we'll see is a red triangle at the 12 o'clock position for increased visibility, as well as on this specific variant, hash marks up to the 15 minute mark on the bezel itself, uh, which is correct for 1958. Uh, previous variants would also, uh, in some cases, have a red triangle and in some cases also uh, not have the 15 minute hash marks between the 12 and the 15 minute uh, intervals on the bezel, which are pretty rare in uh, not commonly seen. What's cool about gilt subs and specifically 6538s is that uh, they, unless it's a service dial, uh, are gilt chapter ring watches. And the other thing that's really cool about 1958 and some of the later 6538s, obviously this is an early sub, but I'm talking about not like a 54 or 55 or 56, but 58, 59. Um, the dials tend to be really warm and very glossy. So uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but when this watch is on wrist, the dial is like a black mirror. It's, it's really, really striking and really, really stunning. The other thing that's very interesting is that these are radium loomed watches. They are very radioactive. One of the ways that we authenticate these watches from a watch dealer perspective or from uh, an acquisition perspective to test for authenticity is we'll actually use a Geiger counter uh, because these watches were loomed with radium. Um, what's also interesting about this specific variant from 58 is that it does possess a white smaller lollipop sweep seconds hand. So that's something that you commonly see within examples from 1958 is that nice white sweeping uh, seconds hand, which to me is really, really cool. I like seeing that in like 6610s, uh, like Explorer, uh, especially in the 6538 uh, because it just provides a really kind of like contrasty look to the piece and it's very, very stunning. Um, two lines of text on this one from 58, gilt chapter ring, uh, gilt hands as well, S stunning, stunning watch. Uh, very pleasing to wear. The watch wears probably like a 38 or a 40. The, the crown is quite large. I mean, it's eight millimeters, it's noticeable. It will dig into the top of your wrist. 1030 caliber movement, but uh, the back, there were the case back of the watch is actually slightly bubble backed, if that makes sense. Uh, if you look at one, uh, and some of the earlier 5513 references kind of possess this same kind of semi-domed case back, uh, and that's to accommodate the rotor uh, 
or the oscillating weight for the automatic movement. Um, in 1962, Sean Connery, who played James Bond, wore a 6538. Um, his was a two line version. I think his was, I'm not 100% sure, but I think his was an, an earlier reference, maybe from 54 or 55. Uh, did not possess a red triangle and also did not have the 15 minute gradations on, on the, the bezel. Also did not have a white sweep seconds hand, which is common in like 58, 59 era watches. Uh, so his was definitely earlier, but uh, Bond wore his on a very small, like 16 millimeter, you know, NATO strap, uh, which is kind of funny, but um, there, I know a couple of guys out there who have sought out and tracked down that specific NATO strap that Sean Connery wore in James Bond, and they put them on their 6538s, and it's a total throwback. And it, Looks funny, but it's kind of cool as well. So this is the Bond Big Crown. Uh, very, very cool watch. These watches have become insanely desirable, I would say in the past three to five years. Um, it's always been a watch that I think has had the appeal from a collector perspective because of its association with Dr. No and with Bond and with Sean Connery. And uh, it's, it's a cool watch. And it's also, from my perspective, really the first Submariner. Obviously, I know it's not the first sub, but I think from a Rolex perspective, there was some thought in the execution of the piece, and I think that that is very much apparent in the aesthetics and also physical, technical elements of this watch. The bigger crown, the high visibility bezel, the red triangle, the white sweep seconds hand. Um, it it's just kind of checks all the boxes for me. Um, these watches start, I would say, in the $250,000 range and can go up to definitely a million. Uh, I was in New York um, this past year and one auctioned without a bezel insert with a red depth rating for well over a million dollars. So these watches can quickly increase in price and would be considered by most, including myself, to be more of a blue chip investment grade type of piece. In any case, I wanted to share this watch with you. It's getting some wrist time and it's a it's a stunning example. It kind of checks all the boxes for me. It's a very clean and honest watch. Um, I would say the case has probably been maybe a little bit polished, but there's nice, meaty, thick, even lugs. Yeah, I said nice, even, meaty, and thick lugs, okay? I did, for all you watch idiot savants out there like myself. Uh, and uh, it just possesses kind of a nice vibe and feel. I talk about that a lot with our customers and with my friends. There are watches that can be a grail watch and then there's watches that are grail watches just uh, onto themselves, meaning that they have a feeling, they have a characteristic, they kind of have a vibe to them that draws you into them. Uh, and I think that this one specifically for me definitely has that. So in any case, uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in guys. And I'll provide a link in the comment section below so that you guys can look at this uh, 6538 and some other articles that we've put together for uh, Big Crown Subs. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.